Hey guys, Steve Wiedemann here. We were recently impacted by Google's Penguin or Panda updates. All the traditional link building that you used to do, requesting links and building all these social profiles everywhere and bookmarks and all the other stuff that we used to do to try to gain uh, better visibility in Google not working anymore. Well, in this workshop, I'm going to give you some exact things that you can start doing right now to get better placement in search results by link building in a new model that I think will be easier for you, maybe a little more time consuming, but it will definitely prevent you from ever being penalized or having to worry about the suspicious link warning that you might see in Google Webmaster Tools. So without delay, let's kind of jump into our workshop. Okay, so real quick before we even get into to some of this advanced link building, I just want to, in two minutes or less, tell you what I believe are the core principles of search. One is making sure that your content is relevant to the query that a user might make. So, for example, if you search for SEO expert, um, I have a page on my website that shows up somewhere on the first page of Google um, You know that, that corresponds to the word SEO expert. So, um, without that page of content, you've got the uh, potential or there's the potential of a competitor coming in creating a specific page of content that's more relevant to the query that somebody made than what your home page might be your home page from now on is your brand name so anytime somebody is searching for your brand your home page should show up anytime someone's searching for your service your service page should show up you get the idea, right? That's relevancy. Off-page popularity is what we're going to be talking about today, and that is how Google um, sees your visibility online as Googlebot crawls through the web and Bingbot. You know, we don't want to leave out Bing. Google still has 66% market share, so we kind of, you know, tend to lean more toward Google optimization. And Google has uh, been really heavy in terms of link building as a weight and uh, off-page visibility as a weight toward their ranking signal. So um, in thinking about popularity, we're talking about specifically links to your website. However, um, in recent times, uh, Eric Ward, if you do a search for link building expert, he's like the number one guy. Eric Ward has made it clear that, um, that Google looks at links differently. It's not just about the anchor. Um, in fact, in, in the interview he had with Google, he said, hey, Google, um, with all these recent changes, has your... Um, has your formula for what you display in search results changed from being about links? And the answer was, was no, it's still about links, but what they define as a link has changed. So that means, uh, you know, to us, that means that if your brand is mentioned somewhere and Google correlates that brand name to your web page already, which you know because you'll see site links show up, then um, it's a signal. So off-page popularity isn't just links anymore. It's about getting mentioned, about getting featured, getting talked about, uh, discussed, engaged with. All of those different uh, factors come to play when it comes to how popular you are online. Uh, and then user behavior. No matter how awesome your page of content is, and no matter how popular your web page or your website are, it's the user behavior within the search results that's going to determine your long-term positioning. And you can see this very clearly in Google AdWords as click-through rate, you know, the ratio clicks to impressions that show up in your browser when you do a search, um, are a major signal of what Google uses to determine your quality score. Same thing on natural search. If you have a low click-through rate, nobody's clicking on your listing, there's a, there's a high probability that Google will think that you're not relevant to that query. Even worse, if they return to the search results after clicking your page because it wasn't mobile friendly and they're on a mobile device because it took too long to load because you had all sorts of crazy images and JavaScripts running, um, and they go back to the search results and choose somebody else, it's a signal, a negative signal, uh, that tells Google that you might not have been as relevant um, as they had hoped. So that will continue to move you down in the search results as opposed to up. So something to take into consideration. Um, very important principle. Today we're going to talk about principle two, which is off-page popularity. So link what? <laughs> Why is building links important to achieve higher ranking in the search results? Well, of course, you know, having that popularity is absolutely going to be important. What you see here is, is this funny little diagram that I don't necessarily believe in, uh, but I thought it was a, a really interesting 
um, diagram to display how Google might crawl the web and access your website. So you can see all of the different websites across the web uh, and then yours, Google crawls through all of them and basically gives you more credibility and you move up in the search results. It's sort of like building roads to your um, desert, um, you know, um, desert holiday inn or something. You know, if you've got something out in the middle of nowhere and you've got this oasis, you know, building roads to it uh, will definitely get people to, uh, to come. So Google Panda uh, started in February of 2011, and it's been just destroying businesses, particularly those that use manufacturer product descriptions. So if you're a retailer for a manufacturer, and that manufacturer has their product description online, in a lot of cases we've seen um, smaller businesses and, and e-commerce websites impacted because they were using the same content that the manufacturer provided. Well, Google usually only gives um, higher placement to the content originator. So a lot of businesses that were curating content or using content that was already online were, were negatively impacted from that, that Google Panda change. And that Google Panda is a constant algorithm change according to Google. So uh, what it did is it, it removed duplicate content from search result pages and of course it reduced ranking for you know pages on your website that are very similar in content. So if you've got four different you know lawyer in Atlanta pages, you know they're all worded differently and in some cases they were they're pulling out two of those listings and basically ignoring them and just you know using the one that it found its users like the best. So in this case, goodbye to PR and article distribution. A lot of what we used to do was use PR Web and uh, PR Newswire and PR.com, and we'd spit out a press release with a nice little anchor text in it, and um, we'd spit that out all over Helen back so that we'd have thousands and thousands and thousands of press releases or articles through article networks, similar press release networks, um, that talked about our brand, mentioned our product or service, you know, and, and alleged smart SEOs were spinning that content using all sorts of sophisticated software. Uh, Google has done a great job with identifying that content, identifying the anchors within that content, uh, identifying the landing pages within the anchors within that content, and it's been filtering it all out. Um, I used to talk a lot about blog and ping, where you would create a blog post and um, you would submit your blog feed to several different websites that essentially would aggregate blog feeds. And so every time you created a post, it would automatically you know, take a copy of that blog post and put it up on their website. If that site consumed HTML, it also meant that you got a free link every time you did that. So again, because you're the content originator, and most likely Google picks up your content first, uh, it's not as likely for that blog and ping to be um, nearly as useful as it was prior to Google Panda. So um, that's Google Panda. And then this year, well, 2012, as I'm recording this video, the Google Penguin update came into play, which affected sites that had too many links to their content from other websites or from their internal website that had explicit anchor text. So if you were to look at a web page and sort of backlink profile that web page, Google would want to see a natural allocation of your brand name, www. Click here to visit. Um, maybe some image links. You know, it, it'd want to see a nice little allocation of, of different anchors pointing to your web page. And after Google Panda happened, everybody kind of went crazy with link building. And now that you've got thousands and thousands of links pointing to your web page that are very explicit in using keywords rather than using your brand name or you know something generic. So any site that was doing that um, yeah, has the potential of getting flagged and getting a notification in their Google Webmaster tools that says, you know, no, uh, morning we've discovered some unnatural links pointing to your website. And we uh, you know, just want to give you that warning. Here's some samples of what we found. They won't give you the exact links because they don't want to give uh, spammers an arsenal um, or a way to, um, to manipulate search results. So they'll just give you a sampling of what they think you need to clean up. Over-optimization. So if you're stuffing keywords, if you're hiding anchor text, some of the stuff that you used to get away with um, that was really more manipulative, showing search engines one thing and users another, they're really um, you know, hungering down on that and um, penalizing sites that are over-optimizing. And then web pages without authoritative links to them. Now this is something totally new and it's kind of a, a difficult idea to understand, but if you think about 10 links pointing to one page on your website, 10 links from other pages across the internet, page 1 through page 10, and if if you create those pages yourself 
and no one knows about them. They're just sitting out there by themselves. There's a very small likelihood that Google would ever even hit those pages, let alone catalog them and, and record them as a vote uh, to your website to move you up in rank. What we've noticed since the Google Penguin update is it's pages that do have links from other authoritative sites that tend to pass the most uh, value to your web page. So if you get a link from somewhere or someone says, hey, I'll sell you a link on a .edu site or some garbage, um, take a look at that landing page. If there aren't other authoritative websites pointing to that landing page, you know, and, and no one's tweeting it or sharing it or talking about it. It's just some orphaned page out on the internet to get a link from. It's not going to have a lot of value, if any. So um, seeing um, seeing that getting links from pages that have links uh, definitely makes a difference now when it comes to what you're doing with your link building program. So goodbye to Web 2.0 microsites. Those SE Nuke users out there that are still kind of getting away with it, um, don't expect that to last. So uh, if you've been making money off of using all those spam tools, be very careful because uh, likely two things are going to happen. One, your revenue is going to start dipping and going away. And two, you're going to start getting those warning messages in your webmaster tools for the explicit anchors and goodbye profile links. So we'd, we'd set up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of profile links all over the internet. Hey, I got a link from, you know, myspace.com or something. Um, again, if that page that you have the link isn't linked to from some other page, it's not really going to provide value. So we don't have to spend as much time, you know, going out and just creating these standalone links anymore. It's a big win for SEOs if you really think about it. I'll show you why in a few minutes. Um, let's go through the different types of link building. No, well, different types in, in my eyes. I mean, you've got probably your own way of looking at things, but this is, in my experience working with SEO, there's three levels. There's the free links, right? And and there's a couple good ones in the free links. The Open Directory Project, right? A little controversial. Those editors, you know, if you're a DMOZ editor and you're reading this, you know, I don't hate you. I just hate you <laughs> because in most cases you, you know, aren't accepting valid sites that don't have broken links and are credible and aren't submitting with keywords and anchors. Um, but I've seen uh, competitors uh, several times get DMOZ listings and you find out later on that they knew an editor and they bribed them in, in some case, so it's kind of bad. Uh, there's a couple still good sources in here. They're harder to get, but a partner website and a vendor website in Freelinks, if you reach out to your partners and your, your vendors and your you know clients and so forth and, and say, hey, if we've done a good job for you, would you mention us? That's a free way that you could do that. Everything else, not quite as valuable. The free web directories, you know, if you do a, a, a search in Google for free web directory, or uh, free or submit site, you know, and then free, you're going to find thousands and thousands and thousands of these free web directories. And they want you to submit your information, one, so they can drip market on you to upgrade you to some other link that you don't need, um, or, you know, two, so they could sell your information to a, uh, a list broker. So business directories, on the other hand, a little bit different. The free business directories are fine. Um, you know, they're, they're not easy to, to find. And if they're relevant to your industry, there's still some value there. Um, you know, directories aren't dead, per se. But I, I definitely know that the majority of business directories these days are allowing businesses to stuff keywords in their titles. So eventually, the value of directories may depreciate. So a lot, of, a lot of this stuff here, I'm not going to go through all of them. There's your Web 2.0 sites uh, over here. Uh, not nearly as valuable, again, as, as they used to be back in the day. Uh, industry and, and um, directories and forums could still be valuable if you use them and those pages get linked to. But again, most of these free links don't have links pointing to these pages. They're just standalone pages out in the middle of nowhere, right? <laughs> I mean, how many people link to a DMOZ directory page? Think about it. <laughs> so the next level here is paid or sponsored links. And I'm not talking about, you know, going out and going to text link brokers or paper post or review me or any of the link faunas and link SEO link fine and all, all the other garbage that people are doing to, to buy links. I'm talking about paid in terms of paid inclusion costs, um, such as a Yahoo directory, which will charge you a nice three hundred dollars a year, or best of the web or business.com if you're B2B. So those are paid directories. They do still have a lot of really good standing in the search results uh, in Google's eyes. They do still carry a lot of uh, page rank, which even though they don't update it in their toolbar very often, is still uh, one of the major uh, tools that we use to sort of understand how important uh, a particular website is to Google or web page is to Google. 
um, associations, Chamber of Commerce, BBB, those are all easy to get, but they're expensive. BBB, here's a shortcut, by the way, at the BBB, you can say that you're one person, and you can get a much lower rate for your listing in the BBB. Uh, if you say you're you know, a big organization or 10 or more people, they'll charge you about $1,500 a year. It's pretty insane. Um, next, we've got student discount pages. Um, you know, again, you know, it's not that uh, valuable these days. A lot of those student discount pages are getting saturated. You know, if you do a star uh, or site star, uh, site colon star dot edu space in quote student discount, uh, student discounts, you'll find a lot of student discount pages. Uh, but you'll notice that they're they're getting really saturated because SEOs are using them as a way to get links, and a lot of times they're linking to irrelevant content. So the relevancy factor just isn't there anymore. So you can still do that, but if you're going to do the student discount, ask them to create a unique page of content. You know, student discount, and then link instead of to uh, your website, link to that profile page that says has more details about the discount, what you do, what you offer. There's a lot more value there because then it's it's more of a brand play than it is a link play and that, that could have more value. Um, text links, this link if um, if you uh, if you go to it, the bit.ly will actually show you how media kits uh, across the web for newspapers and magazines will offer you a text link within a featured post or article. Um, still something that you can do, still a little bit gamey, uh, but you know absolutely probable if you could use that as a way to do it, but again it's going to be you know a few hundred bucks or a few thousand dollars to do that and there's definitely recurring costs, it's not a one-time deal. Uh, blog links. So you could do a Google search for your product, service type, um, or, or industry information or topic, and then go on over to the left sidebar of Google and choose blogs, and you can find a lot of really good opportunities. But those bloggers know that they have clout in their industries now, and they charge an exponential amount of money now, an, a ridiculous amount that's not even worth it in most cases. Um, other things that you can you can do here, this is sort of tier two. Tier three gets into more of the um, higher end stuff and you can see my sarcasm here right bribe a dmoz editor bribe a news publisher bribe a news editor <laughs> pay for premium pr four or five thousand dollars a month for a pr agency by the way and they all know what seo is and they know exactly what you want and they're going to string you along for three or four months and you're, if you're lucky you might even get a feature somewhere in some small local publication because it is a war out there and everybody wants links screw the article screw the pr we want the link I guarantee you that's what every business is thinking right now. Uh, industry destination feature. I'm in the tech world, so Mashable, TechCrunch, uh, Lifehacker, you know, those are all sites that, that I use that would be uh, a good source for a feature. I've got a few features in like Word Tracker and some other places uh, just by, you know, uh, providing content and, um, you know, being a, a guest blogger news. You can pay for premium sponsorship. You can donate to a big charity. Um, you know, you can you can also go to some of the dot .orgs that are out there and donate uh, a significant amount of money. If you do a significant amount of money, they'll give you a full page write up. So all of these things have um, you know in, a really high costs, <laughs> and you don't really want to spend a lot of money on it uh, because long term, as Google shifts and changes its algorithm, you might find out later that hey, all that stuff I did was for nothing. Uh, I have some other jokes in here, like trading your home to the Wall Street Journal to get a link, lose your dignity for a reality show, or sell your soul to Google. So those are all different ways that um, that you could use that third level, the really high-end, most valuable links that you can get. So I'm going to show you in a few minutes how you can still get uh, publisher, editor, um, you know, magazine, newspaper, and and authoritative links without having to pay all this money. It, it's going to be a pretty neat uh, exercise for you. And sort of change your mind about what you're doing with your link building. Uh, I'm going to start with eight powerful link building strategies. I'm not going to roll through them all right now, but we'll, we'll go through each page individually. It talks about it. And, and these will definitely make a difference. If you can do, there's eight of these. So if you can do one of these per month, then you're doing a great job. You know, you're doing a lot better than not doing anything at all or worse, doing the spammy column one stuff that doesn't really have value. Starting one, let's start with the first one. Be found where competitors are. This is the easiest thing that, that you can do. Simply use these tools, Open Site Explorer, Ahrefs, Majestic SEO. Watch this video, and it'll take you through um, how you can find out where competitors are getting their links. Uh, 
grab like 10 of them, run a pivot table, and find out what the frequency is. Find the pages that are linking to the most of your competitors, because likely that's going to be the e easiest list to get on. In other words, if you're a shoe store, right, list of shoe stores, if you, um, if you do something uh, custom, you'll find the, the sites that, um, that will list places to do custom whatever it is that you offer and you'll find a lot of your competitors listed there and get yourself featured as well don't worry about the anchor text anymore post penguin you know the only thing that you should really be concerned about is getting on pages that are relevant to your topic you know and pages that are linked to from uh, other websites so look at where your competitors are at run those pivot tables find out the frequencies and make sure that you're there this sort of addresses Google's new semantic um, you know knowledge um, graph that they're trying to create. So just try to get where try to get where competitors are. Number two, joint content con contribution. So anywhere online where you see people in your industry contributing to studies, surveys, get on those lists. Talk to those guys. Because if you can be a contributor to something that is an influential study in your industry, you know it's a great mention. It's a great brand mention. In some cases, like what David Mim did here, um, you know you actually get a link back to your site as well. So when I did this like a year ago and I got this screenshot, there are already 5,663 links to David Mim's little link bait that he created here. Uh, going to the next one, advanced tutorials and how-tos. Bruce Clay, right? That's how I learned half of what I learned in SEO is by reading from Bruce Clay. Uh, he's got this tech tips page that was like my home page while I was doing search about how to do all sorts of unique um, on-page SEO techniques. So this, this particular page, when I ran it again, had about 245 inbound links. I'll bet there's a lot more than that now. Create a controversy. You know, it's something that, you know, depending on your company and, and who you work for, that you might not be able to do. Uh, but, you know, if, if you can put a play on it or a spin on your title where it seems controversial, and but it actually is not, then that could be a win for you. This particular post was, you know, and 72 people were linking to it, referencing how uh, this guy said why people hate SEO. And it created this big... Um, you know, big conversation <laughs> that, uh, that spawned a lot of viral um, you know, sharing. Conduct research and discuss business results. So good content picks up links fast. Ian, Laurie, and I went back and forth and we're talking about uh, breadcrumbs and how to create breadcrumbs. So other people that are creating tutorials about how to, how to optimize your web page are linking to the conversation saying, here's Ian talking about how to do breadcrumbs. So it's, it's a really good way to provide useful content and get other people to reference that content. Uh, whenever I have a problem that I can't solve and I look online and I can't find an answer, the first thing I do when I do figure out the answer is I do a post to say, here's the answer to this question. Uh, number one, for me, because if I ever have that problem, again, I'll know how to find it. Uh, but two, for other people that have the same issue. You won't believe how many thank yous you get for that. Um, I'll show you after this presentation. Um, you know what, let me jump out of the presentation and show you a good example of how you could do that. I did one with video. Let's um, let's pull open a video. Let's do um, how to bypass Google SMS verification. And right there at the top, because I could not figure out for the life of me uh, as an agency how I can provision Google accounts for my clients when it kept requiring SMS verification. So I created a video on how to do it. And sure enough, 27,000 views later, <laughs> um, you know, it was a useful thing. And a lot of people were thanking me. Hey, thanks a lot. Really appreciate this. This really helped me. So it's, it's a really good way to provide content. What I should have done, though, is put it on a landing page on my website as opposed to just slapping the video up on YouTube right away. But it gives you a good example of how finding a problem and creating the solution and making the solution really easy. Use the same query that you used when you couldn't find it, and, uh, and you'll be in good shape. Let's go back. Six, establish yourself as an authority. Web Pro News does this by interviewing different experts in technology and, and internet marketing. And every time they do a post, somebody links to it, references it, shares it, likes it, tweets it. Uh, it becomes a popular piece of content. So the, the more you can, you can establish um, yourself as an authority through news and through those type of updates, the more links you're going to build back to your website. Create a free tool or plugin. I do free ebooks. People like the free ebooks. You can do free white papers, but kind of boring. No one's real excited about the word white paper. Uh, Ebook's kind of a neat way to do it. There's free guides, um, top 10 tips to do something. 
uh, what, whatever you decide to come up with as a free tool or plugin, it could be a, a really big win for you. Xenu Link Sleuth here is one of these tools that I've used for years and years and years and years. And uh, last time I checked, it was over 20,000 inbound links, tools that you can use to help with your SEO. And everyone would point right to Xenu Link Sleuth. So kind of a neat way to generate links. Recognition and in interviews, another old screenshot showing how I did a, a little webinar and I uh, talked about how great the software was. And um, in that uh, in that whole uh, post, you know, I had mentioned um, the software specifically, Instant Presenter. And sure enough, after I had done that post back in 2010, they actually linked back to the website and they gave some recognition to it. So real big win for um, uh, you know for us in mentioning somebody. <clears throat> doing doing recognition is a huge way uh, to get some real serious clout and some other recognition. Let's jump out to the presentation one more time and give you another recent example. Let's go out to Twitter and let's take a look at my recent Twitter status and I'll show you some examples where I've given recognition to people and it's made a ton of difference. So let's um, let's see here. Let's see if I can find a really good example for you. Okay, here you go. So, so I said, uh, Tim Ash, I just had to thank you publicly for increasing my conversion rate by 82%. Something that he did um, provoked me to remove the opt-in on my ebook. And, of course, I got an 81% increase in conversion rate on a specific keyword page. And I went out to Twitter and I gave him recognition for it. And um, the win there was that someone on, someone else who follows him says, great news, uh, Tim Ash is the optimization god. And Tim Ash replies, you know, wow, that's quite a promotion. Well, why that's important to me is because my name, my brand, you know, which is linked to my website, was mentioned by someone with 15,355 followers. In my industry, that's kind of a big deal, you know? So um, huge win. I, I did the same thing recently with... Um, uh, another service provider it was Cloudflare. I did a tweet that said, I just called to say I love you, and I showed them a screenshot, recognition of what they had done for one of my accounts because of, of their software, my page is loaded significantly faster. And, um, you know, it was great because they actually retweeted it, and they said, channeling some CV, uh, some CV wonder, wish more people share the good stuff, much appreciated. Looking at Cloudflare, another 15,000 followers in one week, you know, probably over two weeks. Um, my brand, my name, my Twitter handle was seen by over 30,000 uh, of other Twitter followers. Um, followers. It's kind of neat. Just showing you how recognition works. Let's go back to our prez. All right. Uh, all right. So the difference between link building and link baiting, real quick. Um, link building is, you know, we're going to go out and we're going to dig and dig and dig and find, um, you know, links that we think are going to add value and it's going to take forever and ever and ever but it's worth it and I'm going to show you a technique today that you can do and you can still use this technique and build some really good links or you can get your best creative minds together and you can do something called link baiting. Now link baiting is a little bit different so um, we're still going to be creating pseudo link bait or similar similar link bait that requires a little bit of outreach as part of the new program uh, that I'm going to present in a few minutes but but traditional link baiting the really good link baiting is is a way for you to create something on your website that everybody loves uh, a popular one during the holiday season is something called elf yourself which is a place that allows you to upload pictures crop out faces of your friends and family and send off little e-cards that have your friends dancing around to christmas music another one would be the progressive campaign where flow from the commercials has a campaign called dress like flow and people all over the world now are dressing like Flow and uploading their pictures to Facebook and engaging with Flow. It's a nice little link bait page that uh, I'll go through in a, few, in a few minutes. So here's four powerful link baiting strategies. Offer quiz and certifications, widgets and embeddable objects, frequently updated surveys, and of course being a source for industry data. And uh, the quiz and survey, some examples of who does it really well. BBB does it really well. And they've got, of course, 1 million, when I did this, it was almost a year ago, 1,205,000 links to the root domain. And over 44 million, that was, yeah, over, yeah, Jesus, over 44 million links to sub pages because people are linking in to their profile on the BBB. That's insane. You know, talk about 
building trust and authority with the search engines. Sempo, the search engine marketing professionals organization, does the same thing. They give you a little badge. I have my badge up on my website. It's a big deal. It tells people that I have some credibility and um, that I, you know, in in an in industry association. So um, they've built 86,000 links to subpages. And then this little SEO and practice company was was playing around with this a couple of years ago. I don't know if they're still around, uh, but they did the same thing. They take this free quiz. When you pass, we'll give you a little badge. It tells you what your grade is, and you get a 100% grade. You put the little badge on your website, and that little badge got itself 5,495 links uh, from other SEOs. It's funny. I've got the old Yahoo Site Explorer in here. Um, anyway, so the other badge that you see here is this Osmed CPD. If you go to Osmed... Um, dot, uh, I think it's osmed.au. Uh, you can actually see what, what they're doing with their continued professional development for nurses. A uh, really amazing badge that they created for nurses to track their continued professional development in nursing. Widgets and embeds. So, there's some use cases for widgets and embeds. You've got the click to call, which would be like a Ring Central type thing where you've got this great little button at the top of your website and the person who gave you that button uh, might inject in a nice little link here. Remember not to use keywords anymore. Use your brand or click here or get your own, um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, explicit anchors will get you in trouble. Uh, here's a motivational tips rotator, just some code that we give people. You know, you want this motivational tips rotator? Copy this code into your WordPress site, you know, or you could probably even create a WordPress plugin and do the same thing. And we've got this nice little iframe that has the rotator, and right below it, you know, there's some um, some text here. This example is a little bit too explicit, motivation for employees, but why not come up with, you know, a, a hundred different versions of that and have it rotate so that whoever picks up the code picks up random anchor text. That could still be a win for you. Just don't be explicit. Try to try to modify your keyword a little bit uh, with your brand name or whatever you need to do. Here's a weather widget. Same thing. Your link goes down down below. It's an idea of how you can use widgets and embeds. Um, I think it was Search Engine Land did something with the Star Wars where you could be like an SEO Jedi or an SEO Sith. That was pretty cool. I had I had that badge up for a while. Uh, frequently updated survey results. So I'm going to give you an example in a minute where we did this. You just ran some surveys on something and uh, that, that was kind of a hot topic and we got some really great links out of it. Census.gov, David Mim, I got this little beat the autocomplete that was uh, an example of sort of doing the same thing uh, but I never really pursued it. Kind of neat little article by the way if you get a chance to watch it or to check it out. Uh, Census.gov at, at the time had earned uh, 2 million links back to the website uh, mostly students and, and professors and other people referencing data. So the more you can provide data, research and data, the more authoritative websites will reference you in their, um, in their articles and so forth. Uh, be the source for industry news. Talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, authoritative content, very, very uh, linkable. Search Engine Journal, for example. Uh, Wall Street Journal. Uh, pizza Marketplace. Anyone can do it. Modern Woodworking. If a modern woodworking website can get 573 links back to their website because they're producing industry news, then you are, no matter what in your industry, you're capable of doing the exact same thing. So, as you see here, anyone can become an authority on what they specialize in. Anyone. Even me, I'm just a, a tech geek who started writing about SEO. And next thing you know, there people are saying, hey, can you write me another ebook? Or can you give me that cheat sheet that you had? And just, um, just an amazing way to build yourself up as an authority. So here's the new layout idea. This is a concept that I came up with over the last couple of weeks that I think will work well for just about any business. No matter who you are, this technique for building links will be better than any Web 2.0 profile page or forum link that you'll go out and try to build. Um, this will be better than any free web directory or pay for bloggers to link back to your website um, technique. And it will save you thousands and thousands of dollars from having to go and pay for uh, expensive PR. So what you're going to do, forget the 2003 link building, you know, or if you're in New York, forget about it. <laughs> just forget about it. It's just not going to work anymore. And in 2013, what I want you to do is I want you to research hot topics. You know, this is 2012. There's only about a month and a half left of 2012. So I thought I'd, I'd you know, mention 2013 as, as the, the plan here. But let's just say it's 2013, 2014. We're going to research extremely hot topics. You can use Google Trends. 
you know, if you don't know what that is, just Google Google Trends and you can find out. Um, find out what's going on right now in, in the world, in your industry. Go to industry websites and see what all the buzz is about, right? And then do some research on those topics. Um, identify resources that, that um, you can reference, like Wikipedia and, and authoritative sources that you can reference in your research. And identify authors, specific people um, in the industry by name that you might be able to include as part of this, this content strategy. Then what we're going to do is, is, and these are, by the way, these are different roles. You've got a researcher, an engager, a publisher. Um, you've got your link builder himself. Uh, these are all different roles, and you can assign all of it to your one poor person who's managing all of your internet marketing, but they're, they're probably going to light their hair on fire and run out the building screaming. So don't, don't if you can't, don't give them all of these roles because there's enough, um, there's enough data that we can dig into and provide to give us the absolute best content in the world. And if we get featured and mentioned and shared and talked about enough, it's so worth it to have the one role doing nothing but this research. So the engager comes in after all that research has been done and starts to engage for opinions and quotes and does surveys and does full polls and feedback, uses LinkedIn and, and Facebook and all of the different social sites to gauge authority figures um, on the particular topics that, that, we're, that we're writing articles about. Um, can I quote you in an article I'm writing? Great. Can I get your feedback or your opinion for a, uh, a study that I'm doing? People love to have their egos fluffed, and if you mention, hey, I've, you know, I, I really look up to you as an authority in this industry and uh, would love your valued opinion on this particular topic, you can get their feedback. And I'll show you why that's important here in a minute. Uh, publish your content without mentioning your service. No matter how um, much your, your boss or the, the person who's really grumbling about the bottom line um, is going to argue you on it, don't do it. Publish this content to be absolutely non-salesy, right? This will be top five shopping uh, or top five Christmas gifts for 2012. Don't mention, you know, the brand. Don't say buy it here for only $13 or anything like that. Just say here's the top gifts for, you know, 2012. Um, just, just be very specific about the topic and less specific about your service. And then the outreach person. Right, this is probably one of the only things that you can't really outsource. It's got to be somebody with, with some pretty decent um, you know, uh, English and, and grammar. You're going to want that person to go out and, um, and find the different authoritative sources. Well, the researcher is going to give you a lot of that data. This is the operator to give you the example. Set the date to last 30 days. And then from that, the, the outreach person is going to take that big list, whether you've uploaded it to buzzstream.com or using a Google spreadsheet, however you have to do it, um, make your big list of those sites that you think would mention your article. If it's a .edu site, here's an example, site star.edu, your topic here. Now, there's still a potential, uh, there's still a chance there that, that that page you're getting a link from isn't a very popular page. So do look at using those tools I showed you earlier, OpenSight Explorer, Ahrefs, do look at those to make sure that those are pages that are getting talked about, discussed, and linked to. Otherwise, EDU or not, it's not really going to have much value to you. So that outreach person is going to go out and start communicating with the people that the researcher identified as being really good sources of um, uh, potential linkers. So we'll go out to those linking pages and those authors and say, um, you've, got, you've written a really awesome article on a topic that we've also written something about um, because we talked about something a little bit different or a specific subtopic of what you talked about would would you um, would you be interested in adding us as an additional resource or further reading on the article that you wrote if so we would we would really appreciate it and if you don't get a response you can come back and say you know if you know I know you're really busy. You know, we think we were a great resource for your article. We'd love to send you a special thank you from our office. You know, don't don't so much offer money, but you know, you could send them a gift card or a Starbucks thank you. You know, if if they're willing to take the time to do that, but don't don't tell them what they're getting. Um, just say we'll send you a thank you. Um, it's a great way to do it without without actually bribing somebody. Um, and then have your content used as you see here as additional reading, additional references, um, further reading. Um, you know, anything that you could think of that, that would be a good play for the particular article that you want to get the link from. 
And then the next step is to go out to those people that you've uh, you've researched that uh, participated, and you say, hey, thank you so much for writing a quote uh, for our recent article that we published. Here's the link to it if you want to share it with your friends and your followers. And it's a really super awesome way to get those people to share your content, uh, particularly because they were featured in it and hopefully fed their ego a little bit um, and given them some uh, fantastic titles <laughs> within that content so that they look at that and go, oh, look what this person said about me. I'm important. And then they go out and they um, share that link everywhere they possibly can. So that's the new layout idea. And I think I think if you do this, and it's a Monday through Friday thing, Monday you research, um, you know, Tuesday you, you start engaging for, for more uh, feedback and, and information and, and insights. Um, you know, Wednesday you get that, that piece of content done, you know, or mostly done. Thursday morning you publish it and you go out and you start telling all of these other authoritative websites about that content that you created with links to authoritative resources, etc. Um, and then Friday, you just continue to build links and build links and build links uh, by engaging with people who've written topics where we would be a good reference. Um, next, so here it is in action. Here's the link bait. Here's the link that we earned from a, a .edu domain uh, talking about the port on the iPhone 5. Really long um, posts that we did with a video and with some other cool stuff in there that we thought would be useful to the readers. We mentioned some authors. Uh, we mentioned Pete Cunningham and Farhad Manju. And then we also linked to additional references. So if you wanted to do further reading in this own article, you know, we linked to um, authoritative content. And of course, at the bottom, we put a little link to take our survey yourself if you're reading the article and you want to participate in the survey. And then a tally of the last uh, survey results. So really amazing co content. You've got uh, lots of great references, resources. You've featured several experts, and you've given a way for the user to engage with that content. And that, my friends, is the Neo link building strategy that I've been talking about on, uh, on Twitter and uh, to all the people who've been to my workshops lately. Give this a try. Have me take a look at your content. Uh, go to my Facebook page, you know, just facebook.com slash Steve Wiedemann. Go to my Facebook page and put in your content article that you did. You do the research, you know, Monday and Tuesday and the engaging on, on Tuesday and maybe into Wednesday. Wednesday you do the content. Uh, Thursday morning you launch it and you start that requesting, um, you know, authoritative sites linked to. Let me let me take a look at it. Get get through your content. Put the URL to it in my Facebook page and I'll, I'll give you my feedback on what I think you could improve. Notice in that content I didn't say anything about keywords. Don't, don't worry so much about keywords. If it's something that's relevant to your industry and you get other related industry or, or authoritative content pointing to your website, anywhere to your website, uh, Google's going to recognize that. It's going to crawl through that authoritative link. It's going to crawl through your global navigation and it's going to move up every single page on your website respectively as you start to gain visibility online. Your, your keyword pages are part of your natural search, not something we went through in today's workshop, but they're part of your natural search and they're a big uh, component uh, of what you're doing with your overall search campaign. So um, just, just keep that in mind that you're building links to try to build your authority. You're building mentions to build your authority. And the more you do this, the more you think about um, you know, trying to build your authority in the industry and getting visibility and thinking less about keywords when it comes to off-page SEO, uh, the safe, safer you're going to be from future Google Panda and Penal, uh, uh, Penguin penalties and uh, the more traffic you're actually going to get from all of those referring sites. So um, anyway, my name is Steve Wiedemann. You've just watched 45 minutes of a advanced link building workshop uh, post Google Panda, Google Penguin. If you have any questions whatsoever, please send me a tweet um, at SEO Steve or uh, hit me up on my Facebook page. Uh, I'd be glad to help you. There's also an email address and a phone number here. Um, definitely love to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next workshop.